Nissan made its mark in the subcompact SUV space with the Magnite over three years ago, selling more than one lakh units, thanks to its killer pricing. And while Nissan knows it can't compete with the big boys in the segment, it's taking the fight to a segment lower. And that's exactly where the Magnite AMT comes in, positioned between the manual and the turbo CVTs. But Nissan is offering this version of the car in five trims, right from the base model to the fully loaded top spec version of the car. So as to give the customers a bit more freedom while opting for a more affordable version of a subcompact SUV. So why go with an AMT? Well, Nissan already employs a manual gearbox with its turbo and non-turbo along with the CVT on the former. So pairing the naturally aspirated engine with the AMT made economic sense. Likewise, it employs the same 1-litre petrol engine as the manual variant. Off the mark, the engine is pleasantly quiet, but it's only once you go past that 2500 RPM mark that you can hear its strain. It's not a very pleasant noise. And although that NVH, low NVH level does help in combing out all that noise, it still sweeps in and it does slightly become irritant once you do want to push it. And that's understandable with smaller capacity powertrains, that too with a three-cylinder setup. Now, of course, the transitions, the gear shifts are not exactly smooth. You do feel a bit of lag. To put it into the manual mode, do your upshifts, which are quite smooth. And once you gain a proper amount of speed that you can feel is enough to cruise, put it in the automatic mode so that you can compensate for that lag because of the transmission, because AMT as we all know, is not meant for spirited driving. It's not for a sporty drive. It is meant for comfort and it does that really well. Even when we are on the highway, we're driving it. It's quite smooth. The transitions, the upshifts are really smooth. But the only caveat here is that the downshifts are not the most pleasant. Once you move past this, the Magnite feels right at home. But of course, there's another caveat. Now, I've already said that this uh, car really works well for comfortable drive. It's not a, obviously for spirited or sporty driving. Big bumps will obviously be felt inside. And I can live with it. But the only thing that I cannot live with is this steering wheel. It's so lifeless. It's so dull. And it honestly disconnects the driver from the car because I mean, even when you want to take a quick overtake or you want to go into a fast corner, steering just does not respond well and it just feels so lifeless. Is there a way around this too? Well, quite frankly, no. Add to that massive body roll and it hampers the entire driving experience. The design and styling of the Magnite has always been attractive. Muscle, check. Chrome, check. Cladding to make it SUV-ish, check. So no tweaks on that front. Of course, you get a black roof now instead of a white one and the easy shift lettering at the back. That's all. Even on the inside, there's no noticeable change. Ample cushioning on the seats, wireless connectivity for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, a multi-information display for the driver and a decently responsive 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system. Nissan is offering a good set of features to keep up with the competition. Of course, it lacks a sunroof like the Xta or even the Punch now, but that's not a deal breaker. So how exactly does Magnite's Easy Shift or AMT slot into the bigger picture? Well, Nissan claims to have found a sweet spot under the 7 lakh 50,000 rupee bracket with not many options available. 
while other OEMs are offering AMTs at a surcharge of 50 to 70,000 rupees over the manual versions, Nissan will charge about 30,000 rupees more for the AMT version when compared to the manual and keep the pricing very aggressive. With the festive season around the corner, Nissan is hoping that the AMT will be a hit and at a killer price, it very well could be.